Well, so this must have been the expensive box, huh? That box was a thousand dollars. Yeah. This one was five thousand. Okay. And that one was four thousand. <laughs> the littlest box is four thousand dollars. Yeah. So there's ten thousand dollars. Oh my God. Okay. Well, there. How is it? This doesn't even weigh anything. There's four thousand dollars worth of stuff in there. All right. Well, shall we dig in? Is this a motor mount? Yes. Those are motor mounts. Is that a C or a D? Give it a feel. That's definitely a C. Welcome to Hoobie's Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube, and I'm in my 1996 Buick Roadmaster. This massive wooded butyl thing uh, now looks even more incredible thanks to Van Gogh rewooding the car, detailing it all out. The paint came back. It looks fantastic, but it hasn't been up to the Car Wizards yet, which is where we are going right now, and it does have plenty of issues that need to be sorted. There's the check engine light, there's also an exhaust leak, I believe, an oil leak, and some other little odds and ends, including a headliner, which they can send off to an upholstery shop. That Vista roof, it's awesome. But also, about $10,000 worth of Ferrari parts have showed up for my salvage high mileage 458, including a little surprise, a flame shooting potentially exhaust. In addition, we had a tornado go through my hometown, Andover. I was able to see it out of my backyard. Take a look. Holy mother of God. You've got to be kidding me. That is... That is a tornado. Came very, very close to the hangar as well. It's about three miles from my house, one mile from the hangar. Did lots and lots of damage. And there are some people that we can help. So we'll get to that in a little bit as well. But first, let's get to the car wizard to have him look over the Buick and see what showed up for the Ferrari. Well, the excursion's outside. That's a good sign. So, ah, Countach. Also tearing into that. Wizard, wizard. Hello, wizard. Man, that is a nice master wagon. It is a very, very nice 1996 Buick Roadmaster. And speaking of master something, what, what is what is on your pants? Oh, it was a long night. I'll explain later. <laughs> anyway, uh, the window is now working. It wasn't working before. Interesting. That was one of the things I was going to have you look at, but... It's working now, it's, huh? It's working now. Might be a bad switch. Huh. Well, and you hear that little extra noise there. Yeah. That is not you quiet there. No, it's not. It's exhausting. And there's a check engine light, but overall it is it is a very nice car. Look at this thing. It's of course the LT1 like the one I had back in the day. Mm -hmm. I remember that one. I really liked it. Yes. Well, in Magic Mike, who's bent over my Countach, he actually went with me to go get the original one over 10 years ago. Yep. Man, that's beautiful. Isn't that something? Wow. It does have an oil leak as well, somewhere. I can kind of smell an oil smell. Yeah. I don't see valve cover gaskets leaking. Maybe we'll have to look underneath. Okay. Well, I'll leave it in your hands, I suppose. And then the headliner, I have it taken out to the upholstery shop to uh, get that redone. And then it's pretty close to perfect. It is. It's very pretty. Pretty darn perfect. But uh, there's some news on the Countach, a new leak. It was actually a big one, huh? Yes. Let's go look at it. So my Countach was up here because of a few leaks. One of them seemed like it was a transmission leak, and then there was another one. And I guess you found some more, huh? What's... Whoa. You are... Ho! Ho! It's not too bad. You're... Is that my exhaust? It is your exhaust. Uh, Okie dokie? And these are your intake snouts. And, and that's one of my ignition, the rotors there? Yeah, that's a distributor. So, all that for this water pump housing right here has just a big O-ring on the outside of it, and it yeah. was leaking. Okay. A lot of green fluid in there. So it doesn't need a new water pump? No, just the output flange is all it is. Were you able to find it? Yeah, it's just an O-ring. Okay. Well, quite a bit of labor as well. Mm -hmm. Yep, and then had to pull the exhaust because I had to... Retap your O2 sensor port. Yes, there was that one like open hole where an O2 sensor was dangling. I drove it like that for over a year because, well, it is a hoopty. It is a Countach, but it was still kind of a hoopty. So that's finally, is it in? Uh, it's actually in over here. Oh, over here. 
Oh. Yeah, if you look down over on that side, kind of next to the sway bar link, you should be able to see it in there. Oh, yeah, sure enough, right there, there's the wire. Yes, if you Yeah. Want. Oh my god, it's in. Yeah, it was, was it stripped or? It had been stripped so badly, the hole was actually a larger diameter, so every time I'd try to put the O2 sensor in, it'd just drop right in, it's or else a, it wouldn't make contact. It's the exact same thing, because I shipped it to the Countach rally, the sensor hadn't showed up yet, and we thought we could put it in. And we tried, and it, yeah, it was it was a hot dog down a hallway. Which um, it, it, anyway, um, moving on to the Ferrari. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Well, so this must have been the expensive box, huh? That box was a thousand dollars. Yeah. This one was five thousand. Okay. And that one was four thousand. <laughs> the littlest box is four thousand dollars. Yeah. So there's ten thousand dollars. Oh my God. Okay. Well, there. How is it? This doesn't even weigh anything. There's four thousand dollars worth of stuff in there. All right. Well, shall we dig in? Now, for those that haven't been following this Ferrari four five eight, it has high mileage, I believe, eighty seven thousand miles or so. Yep. And it's a salvage title. It was thrown into a ditch, wrecked really badly, and repaired. It was it, it was repaired. They definitely cut every corner they could to save money. Mm -hmm. What they did was okay, but they cut every corner, including not sourcing the inner body panels, which is obviously what this is. Mm -hmm. So this big thing was, was almost a grand, right? Yes, it was a grand for this piece of plastic. And you really can't skip on this because this holds on like other pieces in the back with the rear diffuser and yeah. it, it, it felt weird underneath without it. It's definitely like sucking air into the bumper. It's all, it's all wrong. So yeah, you can it needs see all it. the diffusers and everything built into it. Yeah. So kind of important to have this back. I know I said in one video that I wasn't going to do it and you fainted, but we did a lot. And then this box is like, what is it? Fasteners? Fasteners and shields and... What is this? Okay, these are... Those look over the catalytic converters. Those are missing. Okay. So that's sort of important. And this is, why is this shaped? Anti-pollen filter. Okay. So it's not something inappropriate. It's just it's just shaped like it's a yeah. side marker lamp. Uh, where the bulb snaps in is all crushed and broken. You can't even hook the bulb into it. Really? Yeah. Okay. And then we have it's Ferrari parts, but they're using free UPS packaging to package them. Huh. Some brackets. Uh, oh yes, because they didn't want to do any of that. <laughs> That's probably seven hundred dollars. Right. So on the bumpers, it was missing a lot of the bracketry, and they just kind of. Yeah, this is a front foot rest mounting tube. Yeah, they kind of just rigged it. So. Yeah, we wanted to do it right. Mm-hmm. Nuts and bolts and a switch. Oh, like the window switches, right? It might be. Let's open one up and see. Okay. Well, while you do that, I'm gonna look at. Look at these balls here. Is this a motor mount? Yes, those are motor mounts. That's a. Kind of a is that a C or a D? Give it a feel. That's definitely a C. Okay. Hmm. And one says Maserati on it, wizard. Yeah, so that's a, just the the oil filter? Yep. They use that also on the Maserati engines, it's the same filter. But it says Ferrari on the filter okay. itself. Okay, all right. Here's your window switch. That's just the actual. Oh, yeah, because they explode on me. Yep. And then we have, looks like a idler or a tensioner, because mm -hmm. the belt was squeaking a little bit on yep. this thing. Parking sensor exclusion. I'm sure all that stuff was missing when they wrecked the car. Rear license plate lights because they put LEDs in there and that's not a thing. Glove compartment release. So more switches. And yeah, more power under controls. And an O-ring. Okay. Probably fifty bucks for that O-ring. <laughs> I hope not. But the the cool box. I mean, this is all great because the car will be good again. Yes. Uh, but the cool box is definitely in here. This is from Valvetronic Designs. So Valvetronic was kind enough to send this to me, and they make these incredible valved exhaust systems, not just for Ferrari 458s, but any car you can get a valve exhaust you know hit a button open it up and it makes mm -hmm. some really good noises but on the ferraris they also uh, shoot flames with these and he was able to do this in gold for me to match the wheels so there's the the rear exhaust outlet to uh match the wheels which is 
That's pretty that, pimp. That is really cool. Yeah, pretty pimp. But you see, also, I guess, what are these? The downpipes? Yeah, those look like... There's an O2 sensor. Yeah, that probably mounts to right the manifold or something. Okay, but let's see where the business end of this thing is. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Oh, oh, I'm seeing it, and it's gold. It's... Oh, my. <laughs> the whole dang thing is gold. That looks like golden artificial heart. That is awesome. Wow. So you can see there's the valve that opens to give it that extra noise. Wow. That is nice. Very, very pretty. Very pretty. So you have a lot of bits to put in. Mm -hmm. And the car was already pretty functional before. Your hammering of that bracket fixed the... Uh, one issue, I suppose, but mm -hmm. now we have the proper things to fix a lot of other things and make them sound good. Sound really good. Four five eights, they sound okay from the factory, but like any Ferrari, they sound so much better with an exhaust on them. So I can't wait. Oh yeah. So I guess you can get on that, but uh, let's check on a few other hoopties, eh? Hmm, nice Jag. Before we get to my cars, though, we do have to check on the bell of the ball here, the Nissan Murano Cross Cabriolet that you had up here with an unfortunate top issue. Mm -hmm. I you know, this is a priceless artifact from Nissan. So I'm sure they want to spare no expense in sorting this car out, right? Uh, there's only a small amount of money they want to spend to get it sorted out. Understandably so. They got to... Really? They got to resell it. Oh, come on, wizard. <laughs> so, did you fix the top? The top works. We cleared everything out and did some adjustment on the sensors. But as you can see on the back, this has a nice pointy, perky tip yeah. there. And this one's... Oh. You see the scalges here? Oh, like a tree or a shelf fell on it or something, Something huh? fell on it and bent it, and you can't piecemeal buy pieces of this top. You buy the whole top or nothing at all. Ah, so now we know why it was traded in. Yes. That sucks for the person who bought this. Yep. Oh, well. Uh, so coming probably to an auction near you somewhere, which uh, <laughs> <laughs> it'll probably be passed around to 10 different people before... I don't know, somebody finally gets a top for it, huh? Maybe you can be the next buyer. No, 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 no. No, I got plenty of projects, as we were able to see. So uh, let's move on to my own SUV kind of quagmire, huh? Yeah, that's what we're talking about, but I see Michael has found his way to the Roadmaster. He's actually a Roadmaster sedan owner. What do you think? This is the, this is the combination to have blue exterior, blue interior. Yes. 82,000 miles. Yes. Well, yours was pretty low, your sedan, when you got it, right? Yep, I'm up over 100,000 miles now, but uh, I think I bought it with like 78. Yep. Does he have anything on his pants? Well, you enjoy that. Don't make it sticky. It was just detailed. Uh, the Range Rover is, is done from your perspective, right? Yes. There is a software update that needs to be done because when you put a new compressor on, that'll be the final nail in the coffin that will solve all of your problems with this car will finally be done. All of the suspension lights and that kind of stuff, which, yep. well, it's a little frustrating that they make it to where a independent mechanic like you can't fix it without right. advanced software, tens of thousands of computers. You're not going to buy a computer for every single make and model of no, car. I'd go broke. Yeah, obviously. So, I mean, we're stuck with dealers going forward, and I don't think people are going to really like that. No, but not. I guess. They'll all be electric cars that we throw away every 10 years anyway, so. Yeah, I won't be doing this forever. If I Eventually, it's going to be so tough, it's not going to be worth it. Right. Well, okay, I'll pick this up soon. Uh, the Beck obviously still isn't going anywhere. It looks like it was ravaged by a tornado, which we actually went through recently in yes. Andover. Watched it out in my backyard. So uh, I'm going to take the excursion home, which is done, right? It is done, and I have a bill. You t okay. Well, I'm going to take that and hopefully do some good with it. There's actually a pretty sad story that we're going to go check out with the excursion. So the exhaust was fixed, but in addition to that, there's some other items, the brake fluid leaks. So the total, uh, $475. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's about as cheap as I can get from you. So That's the lowest one in a long time. I'll take it. Thank you, wizard. Yep, no problem. Well, for a mystery sight unseen excursion, 500 bucks isn't bad. No, that's not bad at all. No, nope. so now it's a totally usable, safe, pretty good running vehicle, huh? Yep, no more brake leak. Exhaust sounds amazing, and the oil is freshly serviced on yeah, it. Yeah, let's see how it sounds. Yeah, that, that's a touch quieter. Yeah. This, that's, that's a lot better. Yeah, at idle it was pretty terrible, so this is definitely louder in stock, but it'll do! It'll do! All right, well, thank you, wizard. Yeah. 
Enjoy my Roadmaster. I'll try not to get any more mess on hey, it. Thank you. Thank you yeah. very much. Driving great, and I've driven back to Andover, my hometown, to Ground Zero, where, well, this tornado just went through a week ago. The damage is absolutely, absolutely unbelievable. I don't want to do too much disaster porn because it is really sad, but it's just awful. But we'll go over to a place where actually there's someone that you all can help, and I'm going to talk about the fate of this excursion. So the excursion is sorted and all driving great, and before this tornado hit my hometown, I had sort of committed this thing already to a family, someone that really is down on their luck and needing a vehicle. And the excursion, while it is very thirsty, is a pretty reliable, solid vehicle for somebody with a family, as long as they're not taking long trips or having long commutes. So I'm giving it to them, and since they're just down on their luck people, you know, just not having a good time right now, it's kind of weird for me to just do it all on camera and give them the keys. It feels a little exploitive, you know. Uh, so I'm just going to do that all off camera. So the excursion will be donated away, and there is another way that you all can help. Now this tornado, I watched it go through my hometown in my backyard. It started around here and got really powerful right around this spot, hit the Andover YMCA, which is where my daughter went for swim lessons, gymnastics. It was just annihilated with people inside. Thankfully, no one was hurt or killed, but there were a lot of people that lost uh, their cars because they were in the parking lot. And one of them that I want you all to help me help today, his name is Chance Wynn. And he walked into the YMCA to work out, but not before turning back and taking a picture of his Toyota MR2 just before going into the gym is parked next to an S2000. Minutes later, the tornado came and threw the cars over 100 yards in each different direction. The S2000 resting in a parking lot in one spot. The other car was actually inside. The MR2 was inside of the YMCA. And through a little confusion, he actually only had liability insurance on this car. So it's basically gone. It's everything he had and it's gone. He set up a GoFundMe to replace his MR2. I'm donating $1,000 to it. We're going to help get his MR2 out of the YMCA and hopefully find him another one. But if you all, just 1% of you chip in five bucks, we'll be able to get him a new car. But it's just a crazy, crazy scenario. And to have it happen, well, so close to home, I feel like I need to do something. So if you all can help me, uh, maybe there'll be an update to it as we go down the road. Maybe we'll get the car out, see if we can get it running again just for kicks. But uh, until then, it just sits, well, literally inside of the YMCA. So thank you so much for watching and uh, well, Give if you can.